You're probably thinking about buying a tiny house, and I am infatuated by the idea. I often have dreamed about putting one on my land, but there are some things you got to know before you do it. These are some risks and some things you got to weigh to make sure you don't get yourself in a bind. And in this video, I'm going to talk about it as a real estate agent, as a person that's bought and sold a lot of real estate, the things you can get hemmed up on when doing a tiny house. So by the time you watch this video, you're going to know enough to be dangerous and buying a tiny home or putting one up on your property. If you've watched my other videos about things to never buy or you know things about buying vacant land, etc., it all comes together in this video. I'm gonna try to help you out and make sure you don't get hit by the landmines that could pop up. So let's get right to it. So we gotta talk about first the very big elephant in the room, and that's financing. You've gotta be able to pay for it. Well, a lot of times you're either purchasing the property first, let's say the vacant property, go watch my videos on vacant property purchasing. Um, if you're buying the property and then in hopes of putting the home on it, we got to think about some things. First, you got to go and talk to the county, your municipality, your city, wherever you may be putting it. If it's in the county, talk to the county. If it's in the city, talk to the city. If it's in any type of uh, suburban area, if it has an HOA, etc., you need to look at all the restrictions on the property. Deed restrictions, easement restrictions, permitting restrictions, all these things. Because one, this will tie into one financing and then later what I'm going to talk about on zoning restrictions. So remember, if you are purchasing something under $65,000, odds are you're gonna have a real hard time getting a federal backed loan, i.e. normal conventional financing for a house because they're gonna say it's not a house because you're moving something and putting it on kind of like a trailer, not quite a manufactured modular. You're putting something on the property that has got a small net value to it and then you gotta decide whether you're strapping it down, keeping it on wheels, etc. Most municipalities, the county, we're just going to say the county for the rest of this video, is going to make you strap it down and they want their taxes, okay? And remember that once uh, you strap it down, it could be considered an actual livable space, but we're going to have to ask the county too on what they're defining as a livable space. Some people say under 600 square feet is not a livable space. So you got to make sure the county will allow you to set up all the sanitary uh, things with it. A water, sewer, septic, all these things. Because we, if you know, the county has their eyes in the sky, their little satellites where they know what is different on a piece of property. And why do they do that? Because they want to tax you for it. They want to tax you. They want their permits. They want their planning uh, fees. They want all these things from you. And that's just the world we live in. I personally, and I've said it in many videos, that you should be able to do whatever you want to on your own property. And it's just your fault when you go to sell it that that might not be sellable. I think you should be able to do whatever you want. But... The county is going to say you can only put a certain type of dwelling on a property. It has to be built a certain way. And that goes into a whole nother dynamic of my personal view. There are many building plans that are created for the builders to say that is a different type of building. Therefore, we don't want to allow you to build it. In some municipalities, they won't let you build concrete spheres, anything outside the norm of a square stud, roof, uh, regular type of property, uh, regular type of house. You can't augment plans at all because one, well then they'd have to retrain their building inspectors and their, and their permit offices and all their engineers. Um, oftentimes I think it's interesting when you have a legitimate engineer architect design his own property that's different than anything a, a building inspector has ever seen, go down there and say, this is what I want to build and let them argue with you. Um, there's a lot of times that I, I, I literally think that the building code needs to be rearranged for affordable housing because they keep adding to the code and that makes building the property or building the house exponentially more expensive when what we were using before would have been fine. I mean, it's called overbuilding a lot, overwiring, overdoing a lot of things that have been done a certain way for a very long time and been fine. But 
and I've said this in many vi videos, that the insurance companies, they keep lobbying the building code to keep upgrading these codes to a point where we're like, we're just talking about what now? I mean, like, especially in older houses where they're saying that a house that's been there for 100 years and built like a tank is not built correctly because you need 10 straps. Don't get me started on that stuff. Also, remember that price per square foot, a lot of times on these tiny homes, it's not necessarily cheaper. Um, yeah, the actual overall price of the property is cheaper, like let's say 600 square feet, $50,000. That's only $50,000 versus building a regular house would be 200. But the price per square foot is exponentially higher because it's such a small piece of property. And that makes financing tough. So you're either doing cash or you're trying to get some type of chattel loan, which is like a personal line or a personal loan. So you gotta figure that out. It's kind of like with a mobile home trailer. Financing, financing is tough. Um, and then the lenders, they're worried that you're just gonna roll it off in the middle of the night because it's got wheels. So they want it strapped down. And that's where I'm trying to tie in the strapping down, putting on blocks, whatever the municipality wants you to do because if it's got wheels they want you to have a tag and if it doesn't have wheels they want you to pay property insurance or a property property tax and all the rest of the things you got to do get your home permits and all that etc and don't forget if it's not strapped down they can repossess it how many sheds you ever seen get taken off a of property because somebody didn't pay for it they do it all the time. They just back that big old truck up there and they uh, repossess that bad boy. So that ties me into owning the land, not owning the land. Like let's say somebody else owns the land and you are renting the land, like like in a trailer park. You, you, you rent the land underneath it, you own the trailer. Well, think about it, you know, don't own the land underneath it. They just take it back off, right? And versus owning the land and having it tied to it, now you own everything and it's strapped down and it's actually affixed to the property. So think about those things when you're designing your, whatever you're trying to build. So let's get back to planning and zoning down at the county and any municipality ideas. You need to go down there, sit in front of the comptroller and say, this is what I wanna build. Here's my plans. Here's how I wanna to, want to do it. Is there any restrictions on the property? Uh, in the city limits, sometimes they will not allow you to build things like that. They're gonna make sure it's windworthy, that if a tornado hits and it just goes flying down the road, because sometimes these sheds will go flying. Um, not calling it a shed, I'm just, just being theoretical here, that it has to be windworthy and sound and make sure it's high enough off the ground because if flooding happens, like here on the Gulf Coast, water comes up, don't want that thing to just float away. We don't want, like, there's a lot of safety concerns around building a property. Once they decide that it's a livable structure, let's say 601 square feet, and they give you your, your, your plans, you go out and build it, uh, they're going to want to know how many bathrooms because septic tank has to match it or sewer. They're going to want to know how many fixtures because one, they want to tax you all on this stuff, but also they want to know uh, how much water needs to be supplied to the property, i.e. meters. Uh, let's say you have a full acre or five acres and you want to put 20 of these on there. Well, the county's going to want to know all this stuff. I think you could solve a lot of the housing problem uh, by taking, you know, repossessed tax forfeited land in most of these cities and just putting these tiny home communities on it. But the building code one is not going to let you do that because I'm just going to say it the politicians, they want their taxes and they're not going to allow you to make these little mini, mini villages in these cities. But I think you could totally do it. I spent an entire year in Iraq living in a shipping container and I was just fine. I had it made. I had a nice TV, I had an air conditioning unit, I had a cool bed. Some of them had two or three bunk beds in them. Some of them, I mean, we, we had it made, okay? And it was just like a little bitty uh, shipping container the size of this room. And uh, a bathroom right down the way. And some of them had bathrooms in them and they were great. You could solve a lot of the housing problem just by taking uh, forfeited land for taxes and building these things, but they don't want to augment the building code for it. So let's say you have an acre and you think you could throw 20 of them on there. The county's not going to let you do that. Uh, sometimes, well, let's just say here in Escambia County, most of the time they're going to allow you to do three dwellings to an acre. You know, they're going to they're going to sparse the lots out. It's got to be touching a county access road, county maintained road. It's got to have an easement. It's got to have all these things that makes it to where you can't 
make more than three people or three families live on an entire acre when you could totally do it. Get in the city, sometimes they'll just subdivide them in fours. That's why you see these townhouses go up, these big shotgun two-story townhouses go the entire length. They'll let them do it. It's just weird how they'll do certain things, but they know the tax revenue generated from them because of the value of the property is going to come out on the other end. It's crazy how that stuff works, isn't it? All right, so let's move right along. Now we've talked about how to build it, how to think about it, what to look for. Let's talk about insurance. Well, the insurance is going to be really tough. Sometimes if it's too small, you're going to have to look at more like a car insurance policy. Like RV insurance, etc. Things you'd get on a mobile home. Uh, it's going to be complex. Most insurance agents, a lot of insurance agents, and I know I'm going to get grief in the comment section below, they're going to look at a, a different structure and not know what to do. And you're going to have to shop it around. It's going to get aggravating because it's hard enough on a regular house. One built like a tank. Insurance is already tough. So now you're going to be trying to find it on, you know, this, this odd structure. Uh, and just know that you might have to get like a, an off the wall policy and it's probably gonna be more than you would actually think it was gonna be. Usually something like Lloyd's of London will cover it, but it's gonna be price to price of a regular house more expensive. Okay, so maintenance and build quality, well, the tiny house is not going to be built like a brick house. It's not going to be built like a normal great house. It's going to be built in between like a shed and a regular house. And this, this is depending on the tiny home that you have created. I've seen some that you can put on the road and they're mobile. And then I've seen some that are meant to be, you know, put in place, skid mounted, locked to the ground on blocks. So you got, there's a, there's a wide spectrum of build quality we're talking about here. Um, I would just, if I was going to do one, I would have it delivered. I'd make sure it had its hurricane clips and it had a good roof and it had a good four point, you know, electrical roof, HVAC, uh, plumbing, etc. I would make sure it was all good. I'd make sure it was hurricane strapped to the ground. I'd make sure it was on a solid foundation. But if you're more on the spectrum of like we had it, we rolled it here on a trailer and we sat it there, well, the quality is going to be different. So no, the materials of one versus the other, um, there might be more maintenance in a lighter built property, especially if there's a lot of wind or salt or anything like that, really depending on where you're going to place it. Keep that in mind. And sometimes the, the appliances in a tiny space, like an RV comparative, are, are harder and are more expensive to replace, like tiny fridges, tiny heaters, things like that. Just be, just, you know, be cognitive of that. And, but we're not talking about an overall large amount of money. So if we're talking about a structure under $50,000, well, you know, Comparative to a $20,000 HVAC bank on a beach house, it's a way different scenario. So in conclusion, advice, I love the idea of a tiny house. I would much rather have an amazing location, waterfront, on a river, creek bank, whatever, that you couldn't build a normal house on, but put this awesome structure on and live there. Because I am more about location over the house, that's just me, especially if I don't, if you didn't have any kids or you didn't need a lot of space, you were single or you're retired, and it's just two of you. Well, that's what this realm is all about. Or housing affordability just being so crazy. Uh, this, this is the perfect scenario. You grab something that's pre-built, you throw it on a foundation, on an amazing view, and rock and roll, done, okay? No big bills, no big property tax, etc. I think it's a great idea. I think there's some amazing A-frames out there. I think, I, th I think we need to totally go a different route with the way we do properties, but unfortunately, the, the government has its say in these things. Um, if it was me, I would... Uh, weigh whether I'm doing cash or financing. I would weigh buying the property for me. I would buy 50 acres. I would get me a modular build. I would put it on the property. It would be amazing. I'd build me a giant metal building structure for my toys and I would be done. And I'd be living away from everybody off the grid. I'd have me a solar bank and uh, all I'd need is just water. I think that's a great idea. So investigate the kit homes investigate you know these modulars um, if you're going to build it yourself well make sure you go to planning and zoning and, and just ask the government what they allow you to be build and odds are they're probably not going to be too crazy 
bad about uh, these things. Um, I've seen some horror stories, so just make sure you plan it out. Make sure you use a real estate agent when you buy the property because sometimes there's deed restrictions and county restrictions on the property and you need to know that before you buy the property. Go watch my videos on that. Comment down below if you've got anything to say about this. Good, bad, ugly, I don't really care. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.